between two veteran players that know one another. Heifelt saw the double team and so did Pargo. So Pepperdine now must off, must answer on offense. They're already off to a better start in this game than their first meeting of the season when GU led that game 17-0. And now the turnover, Bolden. Into the middle, bounce pass to Heitfeld. Great catch, can't finish. Darby with a rebound, taken away by Downs. And he finishes for Gonzaga. That was just Micah Downs not giving up on the play. He just hung out, right, they brought the ball down right to him. Three turnovers now for Pepperdine. Cannot afford that against this Gonzaga team. You, and there's another turnover. Holmes stepped on the sideline. Turnover number four. If you hope to have a chance to beat Gonzaga on their home floor, you cannot turn the ball over. They've got four in the first three minutes. You're right. They're averaging 17 a game. They're only forcing 14. You've got to play your cleanest game if you're going to have a chance on the home court here against Gonzaga. They don't lose very often here at home. And Pepperdine just one shot taken in the first three minutes of this game. Heitfeld, nice catch. Can he finish? No. Corbin Moore with some nice defense there and the rebound. And one shot taken is not going to get it done. This is a team that can struggle at times shooting the ball, getting the ball to go in. But if you're not taking shots, Krista, you're really up against it. No, you're right, and, and they aren't. They're not taking the shots, and, and they are definitely a defensive team this year. They haven't really found their offense. It's primarily been plays like that. Keon Bell one-on-one -on -one just trying to make something happen. Yeah, Bell misses his first attempt. Here's Pargo at the other end. And it's 8-2 Gonzaga. Pargo with four points. The reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year. The balance of this Gonzaga team has really maybe caused Jeremy Pargo's numbers to be down, but he hasn't had to be a main scorer for this team. And there's another turnover. Can Bolden finish? And it's 10-2 GU. Well, Coach Asbury may have to start thinking about a timeout here soon. Yeah, I think you're right. Very similar into the start that was at Pepperdine when Gonzaga went down there. They got out 17-0 run, but then finally Pepperdine able to settle down. <laughs> oh, Keon Bell with a big answer off the glass. And Heitfeld running the floor in the easy two. Transition defense non-existent right now for Pepperdine. You can't celebrate one bucket for too long because Josh Heitfeld's running the court. And that will drive a veteran coach like Tom Asbury nuts. It's great that you get a play on the offensive end, but you got to get back defensively. Nice finish there by Taylor Darby. Ready, pick, and roll. Good communication between he and Keon Bell. So Gonzaga now will slow it down and gets very delivered on offense here. Down. Okay, this is Bolden back out on top. Heitfeld, who lines up the three and drops it through. And that's part of his game, of course, a 36% shooter from behind the arc. And how tough does that become to have to go out and defend? You're just not expecting a guy of his size to be out there. You expect him just to stay inside, be physical. Michael Thompson from just inside the free throw line, tipped out. This is Holmes for three. That shot's off. Bolden with the rebound for GU. Heitfeld wanting the ball again and gets it against Corbin Moore, and he'll shoot free throws. 14-29 to go first half. Gonzaga off to an eight-point lead, 15-7. The great finish here by Josh Heitfeld. Actually, not a great finish. The block by Michael Thompson, but GU leads it by eight. See the only two numbers retired in the history of this basketball program. Of course, the gentleman on the right, John Stockton, number 12, Still lives in the city of Spokane. Oftentimes he's at the games. Not here tonight, it does not appear, but of course, he is now number four in assists in the history of Gonzaga basketball. Right, because Jeremy Pargo just here tonight in this game, taking over that third place spot with all time assists. And, uh, you know, he, I feel like Jeremy Pargo's been playing yep. forever. You know, finally a senior on this team, but he's really been the guy that's had the ball in his hand for so many years, leading these. Bulldogs. Yeah, just a long line now. Really good point guard play at Gonzaga University. Of course, Jeremy out of Chicago, Illinois, made the trek all the way west to come play for this program. 
And now he finds himself uh, in front of one of the greatest players in the history of basketball on the assist list at Gonzaga. It's a great accomplishment for this young man. It is, you know, and it's tough. He was West Coast Conference Player of the Year last year. You come back in now after having those accolades, and now you've got to you've got to produce again. And I know he's had kind of an up and down season this year, but you know, again, he hasn't had to be the leading scorer. He hasn't had to do everything because they do have a balanced attack this season. And there's uh, there's help at the point guard position. You know, in years past, Jeremy's had to play 37, 38, 39 right. minutes a game. No longer the case. Right. They brought in a, a freshman. Demetri Goodson's been running some point for him. You've also got Matt Bolden who can handle the ball if you, if you need him. Nice rebound by Andy Shannon there. Shannon, the freshman out of Carmichael, California, into the game for Corbin Moore, who went out with that personal foul. So Pepperdine now down by nine points and cannot afford to get down by a large margin early against this GU team at home. Darby inside, nice move right over Austin Day. Darby with four and it's 16-9. Another freshman for this team, but a lot of talent for, for Taylor Darby. I was impressed, a nice hesitation move right there, one on one. Heitfeld posting up inside. This is Stephen Gray, sophomore into the game now for Gonzaga. Here's Heitfeld inside, off the glass. Heitfeld with eight points, and Krista again, he seems to be off to a great start against Pepperdine. What is it against the Waves? Yeah, he really likes playing this team. It's just so there are certain teams that you just seem to match up against better than others, and he's had his career nights against this Waves team. Darby in the elbow, that shot's off. Shannon trying to keep it alive for Pepperdine and does. Michael Thompson with it on the wing. This is Lauren Jackson off the bench. That shot's long. Austin Day the rebound and now Bolden, a two on two. Bolden will fire the three and connect. Gutsy and confident shot by Matt Bolden. He kind of looked around, but I didn't really think he had the offensive rebounders down there in case he missed it, but he wasn't worrying about it. Krista, he didn't have the offensive rebounders <laughs> down there. Bell driving the baseline and gets the bounce and then the roll. That's Keon Bell's game right there, yeah. penetration to the rim. It really is. He's a flashy, exciting player to watch. Bolden again. That shot's long. Thompson the rebound for Pepperdine. Matt Bolden along with Heitfeld and Jeremy Cargo, all three players have scored over 1,000 career points here. I mean, that, you just don't see that very often, three players in a roster that have done something like that. And talk about confidence and point production. Gray, another three attempt in transition. Bolden runs down the rebound in the corner, and now Austin Day working to Stephen Gray. They've got a whistle. This is an offensive foul on Austin Day. That's his first 